cannot give you back your homes or restore your dead to life, but perhaps I can give you justice in the name of our king. It's been talked about a lot. The Tower of Joy flashback when Bran Stark sees his late father travel to the location that his sister was being kept at by Rhaegar and his Kingsguard. It is where we see Bran communicate with Ned and somehow Ned can even hear him. We finally learn the truth as to who Jon's mother was and from her way of talking about Robert Baratheon, who his father is as well. But the Tower of Joy scenes went past the surface level of lore like how Sir Arthur Dane, the Sword of the Morning died. This man was Rhaegar's best friend, and posted at the entrance of the tower. Ned brought along a few soldiers, including his friend Howland Reed. Sir Arthur Dane was the best swordsman Ned Stark had ever seen, and he only died after a sneak attack from Reed when it looked like Ned was going to meet his end. Arthur Dane carried the sword Dawn, the ancient Dane family sword that only the best swordsman can have the right to carry. It had been around for thousands of years, with legends telling that it was created by a falling star that crashed at the location Starfall would be raised, Starfall being the seat of House Dane in Dorne. After the knight's death, Ned brings the sword with him to Lyanna's chamber. We get our first good look at it when he leans it at the foot of her bed. That one shot may have been fan service to book readers knowing that there is a significance to that sword. The idea that the blade could be shaped from a material that is outside of the planet and how only the best fighters in the Dane family carry it makes it kind of interesting. It also is said in the books that people believe the sword itself makes a warrior that much better, almost having magical properties. And while the Azor High prophecy says that a flaming sword will be wielded, there is theories all over the community making cases for just about every popular sword in Westeros, many including the sword Dawn. Next, we have the two maids in Lyanna's chamber nursing baby Jon Snow. We had an email from a fan named Kyle who wanted to talk about the importance of one of the two maids assisting Lyanna. He asked why was she receiving screen time if her character isn't really important. I cannot say that just because she was in the scene, she must be important in the bigger picture. The two maids could have just been present purely to acknowledge that more than just Ned and Howland left the tower knowing of Lyanna and Rhaegar's true relationship, and whose baby Ned was going to care for. This follows the many theories as to how Jon will find out his parents' identities. Howland Reed is yet to make an appearance in the show that hasn't been a flashback, and since he definitely knows the truth, he could offer the news to the King in the North in Season 7. Oh, and his character is still alive. While we have no idea who the maids are and if they're even alive, but if Ned had been any other person in Westeros tasked with keeping that promise for his sister, I would imagine those maids would have been killed. Just think about not knowing if the two women would keep that promise also. I personally wouldn't be able to trust the two with the knowledge they had, but as a Stark, and being Ned especially, I doubt he would have killed them, but who knows, I'm sure he would have done anything to ensure Lyanna's secret was kept, even passing the infant off as his own to his wife after the rebellion. Kyle then mentioned that the on-screen maid was looking in the direction of Bran and questioned if she could see him. The clip where the young girl turns and looks away from the bed is really quick. When Ned walked in initially, he swung open the door and there was two maids. We only see one in that shot, so my guess is that she was looking over to her friend in the way that she knew Lyanna was dying and that Ned hasn't figured it out yet. This is not to say that in the future, Bran will not be seen in a vision. He has already had a physical effect on both Hodor and his father while traversing the past, so who is to say his powers will not grow stronger? Thanks for the email, Kyle. All right, everyone, let me know the theories that you believe come out of the Tower of Joy flashbacks. Last thing I want to say, because I've never heard it anywhere, is when Bran yelled father to Ned Stark running up the stairs. Ned heard him, if ever so faintly. The next news Ned would learn is that he must protect Lyanna's baby from Robert Baratheon. The ghostly word he heard say father may have been interpreted as the old gods informing Ned how to protect baby John by claiming John as his bastard son. Just a thought. Have a great day, everyone. Take care, and I will see you tomorrow.